What you doing there, Lucas? Taking this trans that we broke out of the... Who's we? Who's we? You were the one driving. All right, fine. That I, <laughs> that I broke doing two-way trans tested <laughs> on a road, right? Right. Yeah. Well, we'll figure out what's wrong with it. It'll be out in the next 30 minutes. And hopefully we'll find out what's wrong with it. Fix it, put it back in, and do some more test hits. Get a new converter, too, because I don't know if you guys saw from the We video. already have that. I talked to Tim, uh -huh. and the converter is in the plan. Uh, PTC is going to be making them for us, all the E4OD converters. Okay. They're also going to do one for Andy Wood. Okay, yeah. So, well, but they can't, they can't get the converter kits until after January 3rd because the place where they get them is closed for the holidays. So when does Tim need this truck by? By February, he's gonna go to Florida. Oh, February, okay. That's right. So, I'm hoping if everything goes right, which it should, the new converter, the updated part, whatever you broke. <laughs> yeah, I broke. <laughs> whatever you broke, will go in here. Yeah, absolutely. Alright, well, stick around for this video, it's going to be a good one. I'd say Mopar to you, but he's working on a Ford, so. Yeah. Mofo to you, how's that? Mofo, Mopar Ford. Hello, it's John Cope again from Cope Racing Transmissions and welcome back to the CRT channel. As you can see, we got the 4R100 out of uh, the F-150 after the test drive. Uh, something snapped, something broke and I promised you guys I was going to tear it apart and show you guys what broke. I don't know what broke, it's still together. So I'm going to start ripping this baby apart and uh, we'll see together what failed and then once we find that failed part um, I'm going to discuss with you what we're going to do to keep that part from failing again. That is one <laughs> monster oil pan. Um, <clears throat> with the way this valve body is this this oil pan is actually from a, a 5R100 W, um, because that's the filter that we're using. You'll see it when I get it apart. And uh, a regular E4OD oil pan won't work. You're going to have to run a deep pan, but it's going to have to work with a 5R100W oil filter because. The 4R100, an E4OD oil filter, hits with the solenoid, a transferic solenoid. Um, so we can't use that. And the solenoid had to go where it was at because there's passages on the other side. So when I was designing this thing, I, I had no other alternative but putting the solenoid where the solenoid is and I'll show you when I get the pan off and that is that would be the transfer solenoid I don't see nothing in the pan. Just a very little, small amount. As you can see, this is a, a 5R 
100W oil filter. And the, the E4OD and 4R100 filter kicks over to the side and goes this way. Well, that's right where I have the solenoid. So it's going to be hard. It's not going to clear because it's too tall this way. So um, we're going to have to use these filters. I'm going to leave the metal body on there for now because I'm really curious what failed and I'm thinking it might be the input spline for the overdrive input um, I'll show you when I get it apart and I'll, and I'll come up with the correct terminology for it show you guys a little trick here. You don't need a pump puller for these, especially if you just rebuild it. Matter of fact, I can still see some of the trans gel on here when we put it together. Just take the shaft out and uh, is the shaft stripped? No. All right, shaft's good. Um, just pull it out till it hits the bushing and then use your left hand and just give it a little pull and just tap on it like this, and the pump comes right out. All right. Well, here Lucas is out there taking the, our Challenger for a test drive. Uh, we did a, uh, we have a, a 71 Challenger out there. We took the 727 out and put a 46 RE. Both these videos are probably going to be posted really close. So if you're interested in that for the Mopar guys, you can go back and check that out. I hear him. He's going to take the car for a test drive right now. Rags good. That didn't fail. Huh. The open splines are good. This is the input that goes to. I'm going to take a quick peek at the splines. Those are good. The spoons are good. Let's see if they're connected to the direct drum or the forward drum. They are. Huh, I swore that would have been it. Let's look at this pump again. Let's make sure the pump gears are good. I think I think I I think I found something. Dummy. They've been a Chrysler guy too long. 
I was looking for broken lugs. Uh, Chrysler has lugs. These are called flats. Well, the flats never break. So, the fluid still looks nice and red. So, we have a, a major brokage problem, I believe. All right, well, I gotta pull the valve body out to get the rest of the transmission apart. Pump is good. The overdrive input is good. Coast clutch seems okay. The sprag, the input sprag seems okay. I mean, I could take, take out the overdrive clutches, which look like brand new, and I knew those wouldn't be the bad problem. And then, little baby Bellevue spring. And then we'll have a couple pistons. <clears throat> and these are, are nice. They're, they're bonded pistons. That means the lip seal is part of the piston. All right, well, before I go any further, I have to take the center supports bolts out of the center support, those bolts are underneath the valve body, so the valve body now has to come off. Did you guys see all that? All right, valve body, we're gonna pull out the valve body. which is a combination of 10 millimeter and eight millimeter. We'll do all the 10 millimeter nuts. Unplug the trans brake. And then go to an eight millimeter. And this part is my auxiliary part of the valve body. Let me turn it this way a little bit. How's that? This is the auxiliary part. I mean, that's what I call the auxiliary, but that's the main valve body right there. bell body and uh, the one that's being made in the CNC is uh the chips are supposed to fly very soon and I hope to have it uh, they're a little bit delayed I was supposed to have it before Christmas now it's gonna be after New Year's but it's not gonna be too far behind Here. Yeah, when this thing is, is done on the CNC machine, because this is the one that I did a homemade one here at the shop, it's going to have that same shiny, uh, chromey look. And the way the machining's done is all my 48 valve bodies are going to have. All right, let's get rid of this pan gasket. I'm going to save it. It's a reusable. All right, I'll leave it on. Oh, left one on there, dummy. Stud's got to come off though. This spacer. I made a little bit space for that. Uh. Let's let gravity work with us instead of against us. Oh yeah. 
there it is. All my passages. Some of the other workbench. Oh, here Lucas coming back with the Challenger. He must be test driving. He's making a video out there. I'm making one in here. These are the center support bolts that are underneath the separator plate. Another Bellevue spring. At least that's what us Chrysler guys call it. I don't know what the Ford name would be. Forward's got a little heat marks on them, but they're still good. They're still they would still work, so that's not the problem. I don't like the heat marks though. I'll have to definitely look into that. Make sure that this Bellevue spring, this transmission's got three Bellevue springs. Oh yeah, I see something here. The stamp ring's popping out. So let's pull this apart and see if the lip seal's still good. Yeah, this this spring, the snap ring is not. It's lost. It's 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 springy. I wonder if I put the wrong one in. The lip seal is good, the o-ring is good, but with this Bellevue spring not seated all the way, there's a chance that these clutches were probably dragging a little bit in, uh, in reverse when we were backing it up. But that's not our failure. 
So we're going to continue. We're going to continue on. I'm going to put this back in here. This snap ring here, Lucas. Yeah. Could have been the wrong one. It holds the Bellevue spring in. Yeah. And so I think this clutch pack might have been dragging a little bit, but that's not our failure. Uh, Still haven't found anything yet. Yes, I will drive it as soon as I'm done with this. Okay. No, the sprag's still holding. That would only give it a second gear issues anyways. Did we break a fucking converter? Possibility. I wonder if we let it cool down if it would if it would uh if it would you know move. That was a bone stock converter. Yeah. I gotta get this right off. Take the take this input shaft. Oh man, you're dirtying up all my parts. I'm sorry. It's okay. Take this input shaft uh -huh. and feel the converter. Oh, okay, yeah. Like there's not stripped. Sorry, but I don't have the camera in here so you can see. I'm going to take out the low reverse clutches and the rear planetary. I'm going to have to take the tail housing off to get that out. You got a 90 degree hook? Yeah, I do. That what? That converter's locked the fuck up. It's like, locked up? I can't fucking turn it. Yeah, we broke the converter. Yeah. Can I have... A 90 degree seal pick? A 90 degree seal pick, please, Lucas. Yes. Weird. So I'll have to double check that when I go. Yeah, no. It's definitely a converter. I can't spin it for shit. Yeah, because, I mean, the, the direct, the forward clutches got a little bit of a glaze on them. And that's because that snap ring for the Bellevue spring it either, uh, most likely it's the wrong one. I put the wrong one in there. Okay. And because it's not holding that Bellevue spring down. So that allows the clutches to maybe drag a little bit. Makes sense. Yeah, no, I go into that converter and I just... All right, there's the sprag. Let me shut this light off. There's our sprag. It's in great shape. So there's no hard part damage. Um, the forward clutches have a little bit of a, a glaze on them. I don't like that. Uh, it, the clutches could have been a little bit too tight. Um, also, I, I believe that I had the wrong snap ring in holding the Bellevue spring. Because I remember when I was doing this, a snap ring got uh, lost in the cooker. And I went back there to go find it and I could not find it. So I have other E4ODs on the shelf and I grabbed what I thought was the correct one, but it was a little bit loose in the bore. So if it was loose in the bore, it's not holding that Bellevue spring all the way down that's holding the piston off all the way down. So if there's a little bit of a drag. Also, um, Let's see how the ceiling rings look. And I gotta, I have to inspect this too, uh, to make sure there's no cracks in the piston. And I usually got to do that when it's, um, when it's more dry, when it's dry. The ceiling rings look good. Um, I use steel. I didn't have any Teflon ones, but I will have them when they come in. I had them in here, and believe it or not, 
I put them on the website and I sold them all. I don't see no cracks in the piston. The lip seal feels fine. But I will look at it very closely and address that. But I, I believe it's that snap ring that was holding that belt. Right. Easy fix. Um, everything looks great. There's, 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 a, there's no hot part damage. Um, the converter broke. And I am not going to send it out to get tested. It was a bone stock converter. And I'm not sure how many miles are on that truck. I'm thinking that truck maybe has... I don't even know, 60, I, I don't know how many miles are on that because I'll have to ask Tim, the owner, uh, that truck's got a lot of miles on it and he races the shit out of it. So, um, of course, if we're going to take a trans brake and lean on it hard, even though we were using two-step, um, the converter flashed at a whole whopping 1500 RPMs, so we put the... Uh, excuse my sniffles, I'm still getting over the COVID. Uh, even though the converter was at 15 max stall, we put the two-step at um, 14 to get the max out of it. Um, we are getting a badass converter from PTC in Muscle Shoals, Alabama. I told them what I was doing, I said, hey, I developed a, a trans brake reverse manual valve body for these transmissions. I says, um, I, I, I like you to do it. He says, not a problem. He gets these converter kits from Precision, and then they build the converters themselves. I'm also going to get one for Andy Wood and anybody else that uh, wants a converter. Um, they're actually going to be quite reasonable. I think right around $1,100 range, somewhere around there. Um, and it, it'll be a converter built well, single disc, 10-inch. Uh, to be able to, to get the, the, the off the hull. The highest stall we can get out of it is five grand, which is fine, because when we put the, the torque converter and the lockup, um, it'll be zero stall. But but I'm going to say this again to the Ford guys, just like I do the Chrysler guys. The lockup is not intended to be racing. It's different in the diesel world where you have triple disc 14-inch torque converters. We don't have that in the gas world. Um, they're single disc. And when I mean single disc, I'll teach you guys something here. In the transmission world, this would be a single clutch, even though it's double-sided. In the torque converter world, or in a torque converter, this would be considered a double clutch, even though it's one, but they count each side, because the factory clutches and all lock of converters come single sided. So when the aftermarket companies put material on the front side and the back side, they call it a double. Then they'll add a steel and then they'll take another clutch with siding or with uh, material only on one side and add it and call it a triple, which really it's one and a half, depending on how you look at it. So the single this converters are only one clutch with disc material on one side of the clutch, not on both. So keep that in mind. That's why you cannot apply these converters going down the track under power or going down the street under power. They're designed for turning on and staying under 30% throttle. And if you got a, a ton of horsepower, you should only go to 15 to 20% throttle. Why burn up the lockup clutch? It's just for lowering RPM at highway speeds or anything over 45. So, and that's the benefit of, of putting an overdrive transmission in a gas vehicle. Um, this whole idea was for Casper, which is Andy Woods, I think it's a 71 or two Ford F-150 that he runs a C4. It's got a big Hemi, a Ford Hemi in it, and uh, he's limited to where he can drive it because he's got 410 gears and those tiny tires. Well, now that we have an overdrive transmission with lockup, he's going to be able to have, like I do and Mr. Haney, a ton of gear and still be able to go, 
you know, 60 miles an hour, around 2,000 RPMs, 2,100 RPMs, so you have the best of both worlds. That's why I developed the, this valve body. Now, if you have a strictly drag racing truck and you already have a 4R100 E4OD in your truck, a lot of the diesel guys race the living shit out of them, you could now put that valve body in your, in your diesel, have a trans brake, have a reverse manual valve body, no computer, Everything is controlled by the driver. Nothing is controlled by the computer anymore. You can, if you want to buzz it to ten grand, it'll go to ten grand. Where the computer won't let you do that. I'm not saying you should buzz a diesel that high, but you never know nowadays. These things are making a ton of power. So to recap, this was a failed torque converter. I'm going to address these forward clutches uh, and get the correct snap ring. Um, and put this thing back together and we're we're gonna pound on it uh, unfortunately um, PTC is not gonna be able to get the converter done till mid to late January so they're probably not gonna see a video on this for about four or five weeks Merry Christmas thanks for watching Mopar to you and Ford to you if you're a Ford guy catch you